be here. I know it's a holiday weekend, but they'll stay there tomorrow. Um, just wanted to explain, we have the trees lit, not because it's Christmas, but because the rest of the world started in mid-November. We're going to continue past the 12 days of Christmas. That's only fair. Um, today is actually the second Sunday after Epiphany, and in our lesson for today, um, we are, there are a lot of different things, but a, a lot of it is a call to be aware of what we just do habitually and what we should maybe change, ways that we might renew ourselves. I invite you now to please rise as you are able. Our gathering is found on page four in your bulletin, and you're invited to share with me the parts that are in bold print. On site and online, the Holy Spirit gathers us into a community of prayer. God of old and new, of young and aged, of tradition and contemporary things, we gather to praise you. As we gather with our own stories and histories, may we leave ourselves open to the breath of change. But we know that change is not always easy. As some of us sit in the seats we have always sat in, forgive us when we have let tradition turn a visitor away. As some of us glare at a small child walking around the sanctuary during worship, forgive us when we cling to memories of the church of yesteryear that makes a family feel unwelcome. God of renewal, may we be your new wineskins. May we have room to change and to grow as we seek to further the work of your kingdom. Bless this time and the work we do in your service today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And we can just wave, or you can make a sign of the cross, make a peace sign, in some way safely greet each other. Our gathering song is, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. It's got a page five.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Lord of forgiveness, you healed a paralytic person by forgiving his sins. Forgive us, heal us, and teach us to walk in your ways. Amen. You may be seated and we will sing Psalm 139 responsibly to the choir. The lesson is from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 22. Jesus encounters people who look for new ways to find healing as Jesus teaches new things about forgiveness. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea, a whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at a tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, 
I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth or an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it. The new from the old and a worse tear is made, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, I remember a lot in like science class, we would be divided up and we'd get like some cold brew some bird or a bunch of chemicals and then we wouldn't blow up the school. We thought we had each other. But sometimes, but yeah, sometimes you need to do things by yourself. But a lot of these things you need people, and especially when we're trying to help people understand Jesus, sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need to help someone that get them closer to Jesus so that they can have a chance to, what he ended up doing is he could walk again. He, could, he was healed. And so we want to do whatever we can to help people find that point. So just remember, friends are good. Not always in school, but sometimes in school. Not group project. There's the, the pros and cons of group projects. I totally hear you there. Play out. I think we all, yeah. Sometimes you're carrying the load for other people. Um, and, but sometimes you're carrying the load for you, and you don't quite get it. So it sort of, it sort of works out. So we're going to say a prayer, thanking God that we have other people, and we pray that we can be the friends who can help people find their way to Jesus. So we're going to pray. Dear God, Dear God. Thank you for friends. Thank you for friends. Thank you for people who support us. Thank you for people who support us. And teach us. And teach us. And guide us. And guide us. Help us be those friends. Help us be those friends. For other people. For other people. To help them find Jesus. To help them find Jesus. Amen. Go in peace and go to theaters and music and ice skating and we're gonna everybody else can stand up as we're going to sing our next song.
two ladies in full covering for me. Our family went to California to see one of my old friends and to visit museums and to see some of the sights around LA and because we are who we are, we also had to go to Disneyland. Um, but when you have this kind of an agenda and a three hour time change and losing our habits of home, the time away felt kind of like a whirlwind. It wasn't normal. We slept in unfamiliar bedrooms. We didn't know where to get gas or food. Everything was so different. It's one of the nice things, though, I think, about getting away every once in a while. You get to reset your barometer of, of what's normal or what you can do. We were unbound. Unbound from taking care of our Baltimore pets. Unbound from church events. Unbound from routine. And that was so nice for a little while. And then I started missing our routines. Missing my bed at home. Missing my dog. Things felt too different. There's something about human nature that loves routines. No matter how much we complain about how we don't like things when they feel stagnant or boring or stay the same, we actually like predictability. One of the surprising things I learned about when I went to Wittenberg, Germany last year was some of the older people missed communism. Wittenberg was under Russian rule after World War II until 1989. When the Berlin Wall came down, I just assumed everybody was happy about it. But you see, it changed things. Some people didn't like things to change. That's us, human beings. We like things to stay the same. We have to admit the unofficial motto of the church is, We've never done it that way before, as a way to try to keep things the way they always are. We lift up tradition and precedent. God, however, challenges us with new perspectives. And that's clearly a clash between what God wants and what we want. In today's lesson, we have these established religious leaders, the established social mores on one side, and then we have God on the other side. There's this clash between the old way of thinking and living and the new different things the faithful are called to. The old way of thinking was that if somebody didn't walk, they probably could never walk again, but Jesus commanded the paralyzed man to walk and he did. The old way of thinking was that you couldn't get into a jam-packed house, but in the lesson those friends found a way to raise the roof to get the paralyzed man to Jesus. The old way of thinking was that proper society did not hang out with tax collectors and sinners, but that crowd was exactly who Jesus had dinner with. Those are just a couple of the examples from Mark chapter 2 about challenging things that are and re-evaluating them in the light of Jesus. Today's lesson is about thinking outside the box to find new insights. Today is the day to ask the question, why not? Really, that's kind of the perfect lesson for January, the beginning of the year, right? What if we could be unbound from the past? What if new things are coming our way? And how can we open ourselves up to that? See, God calls us to renewal. Throughout the Bible, there are references to this newness. Psalm 96 says, sing to the Lord a new song. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Ezekiel 36, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. Isaiah 43, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. New songs, new creation, new hearts, new things. And that last verse, the one from Isaiah, about God doing new things by making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, that reminds me of our neighbor church, Good Trouble Church, formerly called North Avenue Mission. They were inspired by that verse from Isaiah to give themselves a mission statement, a way out of no way. 
Now you might remember Good Trouble Church definitely does not do things the traditional way. Good Trouble does not have pews and an organ. They needed the Why Not lot on North Avenue. Most of their members are housing or food insecure. Their church leaders, called guardians, don't have much status in our world. As leaders, they may seem as unlikely as Jesus, calling a tax collector to follow him. At Good Trouble Church, the guardians, though, are the backbone of the ministry as they seek to be radically welcoming to the people of all genders, abilities, sexual orientations, and socioeconomic status. And I'm thinking of them especially because this is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday weekend, and since our usual day of service activities with the churches of Charles are just a little bit different this year, we had to change. I am so glad that we are focusing on service to feeding ministries around us, including bringing frozen casseroles to Good Trouble Church. We've asked people to bring in casseroles either today, this Sunday, or next Sunday to sort of um, support them as a way to do some kind of service for MLK Day. And I love that we can support this ministry because they have done their share of raising roofs to bring people to Christ. They are doing something new and blessed and valuable. They are offering some connections and stability for people who thought there was no place for them. Good trouble truly is making a way out of no way, and our food offerings support that. Thank you to everyone who already has or who plans, perhaps next week, to bring in a casserole for this cause. But Jesus was also making a way out of no way by dining with sinners, by questioning traditions and beckoning the church to come into the unknown, the road less traveled, the new. Now note that Jesus wasn't dismissing all of the old customs. He didn't say, stop fasting altogether. He didn't say, throw out all those old coats or old wine wineskins. Rather, Jesus shows us that there's a time and a place for keeping those traditions, but social rules need to be tempered by grace. As we approach the 200th anniversary of our church in 2025, this is an opportunity for us to look back at our history, at the church customs, at the community impact First English has had. But looking back, does not define who we are or will be in the future. God can do new things with people who come to church with new hearts and new songs and new minds. We treasure our past. We have to also open ourselves up to a future that is outside the box and invite the unlikely and novel approaches to ministry. So as we begin this new year, Let's open ourselves to new things God has in store for us. There is great value in finding a new way, a new path to engage people. You just never know what kind of new things can change us all. When we were in California, we visited a chocolate shop called Edelweiss Chocolates, which was founded in 1942. Located in Beverly Hills, it is the candy shop of the stars. Laura McCall, Frank Sinatra, Catherine Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor, they would all go there for just a bite of chocolate. But something special happened when Lucille Ball visited the chocolate shop, shop in March 1952. As she was purchasing her chocolate, she saw a conveyor belt in the back of the shop and some ladies wrapping the chocolates. Now for most people, they would thought, yeah, they're working, I'm just going to eat my chocolate and go out. But something new came to her. Suddenly, a routine visit for Candy became inspiration for the iconic episode of I Love Lucy, where Ethel and Lucy try to keep up with a fast-paced conveyor belt. Lucille Ball opened herself up to see the situation in a new light. That's what God calls us to do, not just in chocolate shops, but throughout our lives. Don't stop with what your eyes tell you or what tradition prescribes. Look harder. Where is there a chance for inspiration in telling the gospel in a new way? Where are there people who need a different way to hear the good news? How can we challenge ourselves and First English to raise the roof on our future ministry? With the help of the Holy Spirit, we are unbound. Let's find out together what new things await us. Amen. 
There are two questions in your bulletin on page 10. Number one, what kind of obstacles, and they could be physical or spiritual or some other kind of way, what kind of obstacles keep us from accepting new things? And number two, in the text there is an unusual healing, an unusual choice of the disciple, and unusual words about fasting. What does this tell you about Jesus' style and message? I'm going to ask you to find one or two people and have just a little bit of a conversation about a lesson. It could be based on one of those questions, or maybe there's something else you noticed that you just wanted to share with somebody. But especially, I would encourage you to think of whatever obstacles might keep us to um, keep us from accepting new things. What gets in our way of opening our hearts and opening our minds? So you have two minutes. God be with you. Start exploring. Yeah. Yeah. 
but we brought it. Right. So it's really interesting. Our, our response is to surprise. That would be really interesting to think about the circumstances of the region. Response to surprise. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. 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 I'm doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So what yeah. you yeah. 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 Right, right. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration, especially among our members. Andrew, Carol, Helen, Glenn, Frankie, Matthew, Barbara, David, and Margo. And among our friends, Mary, Marcia, Ray, Ron, William, Walter, Michelle, Florence, Hi, Jennifer, Rachel, Bob, Nancy, Christy, Mary, Norma, Bill, Bianca, Sue, Debbie, Y.E., Jessica, Julia, Julie, Bo, Gary, Samuel, Beth, Janelle, Susan, Frank, Elijah, Jay and family, Adelbert, Rachel, Ashley, Roger, Ricky, Jake, Scott, Barbara, Marianne, Anne, and Rick. And those we remember in our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your peace overcome evil among people and places mired in conflict, like Ukraine, Russia, Arctic, Turkey, Syria, Afghanistan, Haiti, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Lebanon, Belarus, Libya, Yemen, Israel, the Church in the Holy Land, particularly Jerusalem, and for siblings in Gaza. God, in your mercy, Hear our Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully God of wisdom. Give visions of justice and unity to our leaders, Joe, Wes, and Brandon, to our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, who is on leave, presiding bishop, Pro Tem, Michael Burke, as well as our bishop, Bill Bull, and their staff. God, in your mercy, hear our Trust in God who raised Jesus and will also raise in spirit and in truth. We remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. We offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. The offering continues to be done in a, in a new way. Talk about new things. So you're able to give by text, by going to the website. If you brought an offering with you, there is a box in the church lobby, um, or you could mail a donation. All of that information is there. The QR code will take you to our website. And now the offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the great Thanksgiving prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for coming into the world to fulfill for us your will, holy will and accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Gathered to one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast, and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. At Jesus' table, Heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. You may be seated and the ushers will invite you forward to receive the communion.
you're welcome to join with me. Let us pray together. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all, and to your glory now and forever. Amen. There are several really important announcements in your bulletin. Actually, there's a couple in your uh, bulletin and some in your announcement page. In the bulletin, there is a health dinner on page 18, so if you're interested in joining us, there's information about that. We'll put more in next week. Um, but next week is our annual meeting, so all of you are welcome to come. You're welcome to uh, join us, not only for worship, but plan a thing after so that we can look towards our future and see what things we might need to change or should change in order to better fulfill our mandate to share the good news. The annual meeting is right after church next week. Um, now today, there are a few events taking place. Like we've said if somebody brought a, a frozen casserole, put it in the freezer already. Thank you. Um, also, next week, we're going to be collecting casseroles, frozen casseroles for feeding ministries, just for our MLK service. But if you'd like to go today, the African Descent Lutheran Association is offering a book signing and, um, and a talk afternoon between uh, this evening really between five and seven there's information about that um reggie price has written a book and so we'd love for people to go there it's sort of a way to keep an okay day and, and then get to know reggie who does such amazing ministry in our synod um on the other side there's save the date movie nights we have um, the king's speech coming up on january 26th speaking of like gatherings thank you for everybody who came last night for our game night I think that was <coughs> widely appreciated, and we're, we'll probably try to do that again sometime soon. That was fun. Um, we are updating our prayer list, so you might have noticed our prayers for friends have gotten a little bit long. We're happy to keep people on the list, but we are going to um, ask you to let us know who should stay on the list. If we don't hear from you, we'll probably take their name off, unless we know that they need to be uh, remaining on. So just let us know. We want to make sure these are accurate lists for the friends. Um, also, a couple of things coming up. February 4th is our Scout Sunday and Super Bowl of Caring. So, it's not the Super Bowl, but it's our Super Bowl of Caring. We're going to have a chilly meal that day. And the reason for that is the actual Super Bowl is our Shrove Sunday pancakes. So, we can't have pancakes in the chili the same day. So, we're going to spread it out. So, on the 4th is Super Bowl of Caring, Scout Sunday. February 11th is the Shrove Tuesday pancake that we're doing another time. And David's going with us. Okay. It says here, Super Bowl has to be eating off on the fourth. It's because they bring negative to the last one. Right. So the Super Bowl should, the canned goods should be brought through the fourth. Correct. That and that was not clarified to us. So thank you. That's a good question. I thought that all the dates were already going to be that. Okay. So just read over your announcements. There's, there's several things going on. We'd love for you to be included as you are able. Is there anything else that needs to be? Oh, well, okay, girl, please come up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Okay, this one is not as time sensitive, but I almost made a mistake this week that I don't want you to make. I almost gave everything in this bag to Green Drop, which is a fantastic organization. I give things to them all the time. What is that? That is a murder mystery puzzle. Someone will want it. And so I was going to give it to Green Drop. However, there's a better thing to do with your giveaway stuff. In April, the end of April, the last Saturday in April, we are going to have a yard sale. That is a Disney water bottle. Never been used, perfectly good. We just don't need it. What's something else in the bag? We'll get the pink thing. Those are oxalotl slippers. They don't fit Ryan. Um, someone's gonna love them. I have to buy Ryan some in another size. Preschool families? I don't know. There's actually a shout out in the first row, uh, maybe if your feet are slightly smaller than Ryan. The point is, if you've got stuff to donate that's in good shape, start bringing it to the church. 
because we're doing the yard sale in April. That's to benefit uh, everyone who's going to New Orleans this summer, okay? So this is a way that you can help out without even having to like chuck some money in a pot. So any cool stuff that you have that you know somebody else will want, I'm gonna create a space out in the narthex so we can start bringing things in. And if you have any questions about what we can accept, just ask me, like definitely not mattresses, can't accept those, nobody else takes them. But other than that, pretty much everything's okay. So thank you, Vanna White, for, for demonstrating. I will remember not to give anything else away except to the church through April. So if you can keep that in mind too, we would love your help with the arts. Christmas things, maybe things they had that they ended up getting replaced for Christmas or something. So, all right, and now please rise as you are able for the. Bus.